Hey FBC kids and welcome back to our series called Clue where we've been getting all these different clues about the mystery of Easter and why we celebrate Easter all the way till today. Now you might be thinking, hey, Miss Julia, Easter's over. It was last Sunday, all the eggs are gone, ate all the chocolate. Well, guess what? Easter is never over. There is never a time to stop celebrating the resurrection of Jesus Christ because guess what? Jesus did some awesome things for us and we need to keep that in mind because Jesus also gave us a mission. Are you ready to learn about it? Well, I am too. Let's go sing some music and I'll see you in just a minute.
All right, it's time for some more clues about our Easter lesson. So go ahead and grab your Bibles. We're going to the book of Acts, and we're going to start in the first chapter. Acts is in the New Testament, which means it's towards the back of your Bibles. You start with Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts. If you found Romans, you're too far. you got to go back just a little bit. Now, last week we learned that Jesus died on the cross, and then he was put in a tomb. But did he stay in the grave? No! He rose back to life in three days. But what happened after that? Well... We looked in the tomb, it was empty. Mary saw him in the garden, but what happened next? Let's listen to our story from the book of Acts and find out. And I want you to listen for clues about what happened next and what this has to do with Easter, okay? So I'm going to Acts chapter one and I'm gonna read the first 10 verses, okay? In my first book, I told you, Theophilus, about everything Jesus began to do and teach until the day he was taken up to heaven after giving his chosen apostles further instructions through the Holy Spirit. During the 40 days after he suffered and died, he appeared to the apostles from time to time, and he proved to them in many ways that he was actually alive. And he talked to them about the kingdom of God. Once when he was eating with them, he commanded them, do not leave Jerusalem until the Father sends you the gift he promised. As I told you before, John baptized with water, but in just a few days, you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. So when the apostles were with Jesus, they kept asking, Lord, has the time come for you to free Israel and restore our kingdom? And he replied, the Father alone has the authority to set those dates and times, and they are not for you to know. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses telling people about me everywhere, in Jerusalem, throughout Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. After saying this, he was taken up into a cloud while they were watching, and they could no longer see him. As they strained to see him rising into heaven, two white-robed men suddenly stood among them. Men of Galilee, they said, why are you standing there staring into heaven? Jesus has been taken from you into heaven, but someday he will return from heaven in the same way you saw him go. What an amazing story. Who did Jesus appear to after the resurrection? His chosen apostles, his disciples that believed in him, and he appeared to many other people, and he walked the earth for 40 more days. What do you think he did for those 40 days? Why do you think he stuck around, hmm? We know just a little bit about what he did from the Bible. These are what we just read. He taught and he showed people that he was really alive and he appeared to more than 500 people at once. He also performed miracles, like the time when disciples were fishing in their boat with the empty fishing nets and Jesus told them to drop their nets and they caught so many fish that they couldn't even hold them all. It was just full. So let's look back at the clues and figure out what happens. Acts 1 verse 8 tells us about a promise that Jesus made. Did you pay attention? Do you remember what it was? What did he promise? He said that the Holy Spirit would come and give his people power. Hmm. What mission did he also give them? He told them that there would be eyewitnesses around the world so that people would know the good news of the gospel. Do you think he was only talking to the disciples, the ones right there? Nope. He was talking to us too. Everyone who knows God can be a witness for him. Where did Jesus tell the disciples to go and tell about him? Well, they listed a couple cities. Jerusalem was the city where they lived. Judea was the surrounding area. And Samaria was even further away. But he didn't stop there. Where was the last place Jesus told his disciples to go? He said that they would go to the ends of the earth. That's a lot of places, right? That's a whole wide world. What happened after Jesus told them to go tell the world about him? Jesus rose, or ascended is what the word is, into heaven where the Bible says he sits at the right hand of God the Father. What an amazing story. I think we're almost done solving this mystery. After that first Easter, Jesus gave his disciples a special assignment to share his good news with the whole world. Have you put the clues together? Do you know what this story tells us about Easter and why it's so very special? Let's see if Mac has an answer for us. Every Easter, we celebrate Jesus's good news. 
Thanks, Mac. And I don't know about you, but I am so excited to continue to celebrate Easter and all the amazing things that God has done for us. Now, the same message that Jesus gives us and he first gave to his disciples, they were to be eyewitnesses and to give an account for what happened on Easter, to tell everyone about Jesus's amazing power and the sacrifice that he made. Remember the Passover lamb that would have to pay the blood sacrifice? Or sin. An eyewitness has to pay attention and remember what they saw. So let's see if you can do that in this game. I'm going to give you one minute to look at a picture of a bunch of items on a table, okay? You have to memorize what's on the table. When I show you again, there's going to be one item missing, okay? So here's your one minute. Awesome job! Now, I'm going to take one item away and you're going to have to figure out from the picture which item is missing, okay? Here you go. Okay, do you know which item is missing from the second picture? I'm gonna show you, ready? Three, two, one! It's an orange race car! Did you get it right? Oh, nice. Now, even though we weren't there in person, we are all eyewitnesses to tell others what happened with Jesus. So, who can you tell about Jesus this week? Now, we've spent the last couple of weeks really focusing on the clues of the Easter story and to discover what really happened so many years ago and why we celebrate it all the way till today and why it's so important. Now, a couple weeks ago, we learned that every Easter, we worship Jesus, just like the people did when he entered the city of Jerusalem and they waved their palm branches and they shouted, Hosanna! Then we learned that every Easter we remember Jesus' sacrifice of him giving his life for us, just like Jesus and his disciples were celebrating the Passover meal and the Passover lamb's sacrifice. We learned that every Easter we celebrate Jesus' resurrection, just like his followers did when they discovered that he'd risen from the dead. And today we learned that every Easter we share Jesus' good news, that he is alive and we can know him. Now, do you remember where Jesus told the disciples to go and tell others about him? The whole world to go to the ends of the earth. Now, let's see. I'm going to throw it up and we're going to see where my hands land on the earth. And we're going to talk about maybe those places. All right. I landed on the Marshall Islands over here in the Pacific Ocean and the Democratic Republic of the Congo in Africa. But here's my favorite favorite part. You don't have to travel the whole wide world in order to tell others about Jesus because the world is full of people that need to know about Jesus. So guess what? 
people at your home, people at your school, people in your neighborhood, people at your church. There is never a bad time to talk about Jesus and his amazing love for us. In fact, Matthew 28 verses 19 and 20 are called the Great Commission and it commands us to go therefore into all the nations to teach the good news of Jesus Christ. This passage of scripture is called the Great Commission because it tells us to go and do these great things for God. Jesus said this after he rose from the dead and before he ascended into heaven. Who do you think Jesus was talking to when he said this? He was talking to his disciples directly, but this message was to be for anyone who followed him, even us today. What did Jesus tell us to do? To go into all nations and preach the good news of Jesus Christ. Now, you don't have to travel all the way around the world, but maybe Jesus is putting that special thought in your heart that you could go around the world telling others about Jesus. We can also tell everyone about Jesus in our own lives. There's never a wrong time. What did Jesus make his promise? He, <laughs> I'm sorry. What did Jesus promise us? He promised to be with us always. When we're doing his work and telling others about him, we're never alone. If you could go anywhere in the whole wide world to tell others about Jesus, where would it be? All of those countries in this whole wide world are full of people who need to hear the good news. Do you, anyone know what a missionary is? Missionaries are people who are on a mission for Jesus. Some missionaries go to other countries, but guess what? Just like I said, we can all be missionaries right here, right now. All we have to do is be willing to share the good news of Jesus Christ with others. I have a few discussion questions and then we'll end in a word of prayer. How long did Jesus walk the earth when he rose from the grave? 40 days. How many people did he appear to in those 40 days? More than 500. What did Jesus promise before he left? He promised that he would send the Holy Spirit. Now, what mission did Jesus give his followers? To be his witnesses in all of the earth, to go and tell everyone what happened to Jesus in today's Bible story. He ascended or rose to heaven. What do you think it means to be his witness? That's a question for you to answer. And where should we be witnesses for Jesus? And how can you and I be witnesses for Jesus this week? I hope you guys are having an awesome week. If there's anything that you guys need, please let me know. I'd love to lend a hand. Will you join me in a word of prayer as we close? Heavenly Father, I thank you for this time together of worship and of learning and growing closer to one another, Lord. I thank you for these kids and their families that they have spent time to worship and grow closer to you, Lord. I thank you for this reminder, Lord, that we are not alone, that we have the Holy Spirit to come and indwell in us, that we have the power and strength and comfort of God in spirit form. Lord, I thank you so much for this, your son, Jesus Christ, our Savior, who came to pay the debt of our sin, Lord, that we do not have to live in fear, in agony, or in loneliness, Lord, that you can come and walk right beside us as we live our lives and choose to go and tell everyone about you. Heavenly Father, I ask for these families to just have an amazing week, Lord, to grow closer to you and one another. I ask these things in your name. Amen. I hope you guys have an awesome week and I will see you again. We've got a few more clues and a few more stories in the New Testament to learn about Jesus before we wrap up our series. So I will see you next time. Bye-bye.